Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Vancouver Rain Draft to Glory franchise mode here in MLB The Show 23. So I am pre-recording this episode and you guys could probably understand why. I really want to just see how we wrap up this regular season. I'll probably also pre-record the playoff episodes because we're more than likely going to be a playoff team. So just a little heads up on that front. But uh, so far we've been absolutely fantastic this season. 75 and 36. So we're still on pace for 109 wins, which would be more wins than all of last year, which is kind of crazy because last year we finished with 107 wins, but we're on pace to have 109 wins, I guess, this year and 53 losses if we continue on this pace. But uh, if that also stays form, I think this team should be able to get themselves to a World Series. If that doesn't happen this year, once again, I will be very disappointed because this team has been improving in a lot of different areas. If we look at our team rank, you can see we are the best in batting average. We're best at like runs scored as well. We're number one in hits, number one in doubles. We're number four in uh, triples. Home runs were number one. RBIs were number one. So pretty much every offensive stat we're up there. We're a little bit lower in stolen bases, probably because Ollie Gelman's no longer on the team, but we're still up there at number eight. Um, we're also up there in stolen base percentage still at number five or actually tied for fourth, which is pretty awesome. We're also up there in terms of taking walks, which is dope. Uh, strikeout wise, we are not very good. So I guess we do still strike out a bunch, but that is okay. Slugging percentage is number one on base percentage is number one. Toll base is number one. Plate appearances number one. Like just in general, offense has been great, but the one thing that has improved a lot this year has been our team ERA. We are currently fourth in ERA. Last year, I think at the end of the season, we finished like, I think it was like eighth or tenth or something like that. I honestly can't remember, but we have improved a lot since then. So I'm hoping that gives us a little bit of an edge when we get into the playoffs as well. Because now we'll actually be able to pitch some games really well. So there is that and i'm excited to see what this team could do once we get to the playoffs we are currently the ninth team in terms of runs allowed so we still do allow a decent amount of runs but as long as we can kind of keep that lower than our offense we shouldn't have as much problems i hope when it comes to the playoffs so there is all that and you can see we are dominating the league the only team i'd be really worried about uh, losing to in the playoffs would be the pittsburgh pirates if we go to a world series against them they could honestly beat us because they are a little bit better pitching wise we're a better offensive team but they're pretty much the only team that's able to keep up with us right now in terms of the standings as you can see like i said 75 and 36 for us while you head over to pittsburgh they are 72 and 41 they've scored less runs than us but they've allowed less runs as well so will be interesting to see which of those two teams ends up maybe winning the world series this year because i think those two are the favorites unless a wild team card a uh, wild team card our wild card team comes into existence to knock us all out but i am very excited just to see what happens the rest of the season hopefully we do not suffer any injuries like we've done in the last few years because that would be kind of hurtful but uh, let's just hope that our team could uh, find themselves with our best record yet or 107 wins again that would be awesome too so let's get into that and simulate the rest of it because like i said pre-recording this episode and probably all of the playoffs but you could still comment and i will try and throw your comments into the video regardless but i just like to pre-record these episodes because we're at that stage where we just want to see us win a world series right so might as well get through it fast as possible and i'm not going to worry about contract extensions yet because contract extensions will not really matter at this stage at least right now right now they will once we get to the off season but uh, also, one thing I wanted to remain, uh, bring up is the draft from last episode. We had an okay draft, I'd say. I don't know what your guys are saying since I'm pre-recording this, but I will throw up your comments at this point in time just to show you what you guys thought of our draft. I think it was a good draft because, I mean, we got 3A potential guys, a lot of 86, 87s as well, potential-wise. Rod Smith, he's a high overall at least, so maybe he develops into being something and he's at least not like a low overall and he's not a, like a third baseman that's going to take a long time to develop because he's already a 70 so i think it was a good draft and i hope you guys feel the exact same way but let's get the rest of the season done and see what happens see if we can have our best season yet or will we fall short of 107 wins this time around as long as we win in the playoffs actually that is what matters so we definitely need to just punch our ticket to the postseason and that'll be good and we're off to a good start this episode if we've won five of our last seven games love to see it are we the first team to hit 80 wins or did the pirates pass us yet 
Probably not, my guess. They're at 76 wins now. The Reds are the next team that hit 70 wins also on the season. So only three of us, or actually four of us, because the Astros have hit 70. We're seven games up on the Astros, which is pretty insane. So there is that. Let's continue. Simulane, let's go another week. Actually, yeah, how close are we to end the triple and double A? Yeah, we're still a ways away. Might as well take it still a little bit slow anyways, just in case we end up getting slapped by something. Uh, the Silva's back. That's great news for the double A team, I think it is. I'll go auto-utilize on that. We lost back-to-back -back games to Houston. That's not great for the standings, but we did win four straight games before that. 84 and 40. They're six and a half games back of us now. So they're the only other team I'm kind of worried about in our division that might pose us a bit of a threat just because they're winning a lot of games for being a team that's just like trailing us. And the Angels are not really that scary even though they're above 500. They're way back of us. Rangers are not scary at all. And then the Mariners are falling off too. Our division is pretty strong, I'd say, for the most part. Let's go another week. See how we do this week. Uh, Theodore Ackerman's been injured for one to two months. That kind of sucks. That's the guy in AAA, I think. Uh, let's go to AA and adjust the lineup because I don't know if it will affect my MLB roster. And I do not want my MLB roster manipulated in this episode. Uh, so I think it was a catcher we needed. So I'll move Felipe Torres over because Felipe Torres should be up there anyways. Um, that's good. Perfect. Good and ready to go. How's double A AA and triple A doing? Triple A is in the playoff spot right now. And same with double A. This might be our first year where we have every single league make the playoffs, which would be pretty awesome. Uh, Julio Fernandez, or Hernandez, not Fernandez, has been injured one to two months. That's not a guy that's in the MLB, so that's okay. Um, once again, we'll go to double A and adjust their lineup. Don't know why double A is getting slapped with injuries right now, but they are. We'll put Becerra in, because why not, since he was an outfielder as well. I don't really care who goes in these spots at the moment. So we'll just get Becerra in every single spot. There you go. I could have put the Silva actually in that spot, but oh well. Uh, one thing I'm not too sure on yet is who we're going to be calling up for September call-ups, because that is just right around the corner. So that's a bit scary. Let's go another week. See how we do here. Felipe Torres has now been injured. Uh, let's go. And that's another one to two months injury. Wow. So double A is just getting completely slapped. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. And once again, we'll have to go adjust double A's lineup. I don't know why double A is getting slapped like this. I, I would prefer them, though, over our MLB team. So I'm okay with that. Let's go with Omori Gomez instead. But jeez. Yeah, this team has had three straight injuries in the span of a few weeks. Craziness. Hopefully that doesn't hurt those guys' development too much. We're at 90 wins now. The Astros are only five games back of us. If we end up getting passed by the Astros, I'll be kind of shocked, to be honest. Ackerman's able to be reinstated. We'll go auto on that. Oh, man, we're on a losing streak. All of a sudden, five-game losing streak. The Astros are now two games back of us. If we finish in a wild card spot, we're going to win the World Series. We're going to do what the Diamondbacks did a few years ago. Mark my words. Mark my words. Because we should not be falling off this much, but we are. Uh, have we been passed in the standings? No, we have not. We are still the best team in baseball, but uh, the Astros are second place. And the Pirates are also right there, too. Huh. I think we would win the World Series, though, if uh, we end up getting passed. If the Astros win the World Series because of this, I would be really pissed off. <laughs> but it is what it is. got to do September call-ups now. Which means we got to call up, I think, a few players, right? Let me just go through this last game in a month. There's another win. Hernandez is able to be well reinstated. We'll go auto on that. And now we should have to do our September call-ups. we got to call up two people, I think. Yeah, two people. So let's go through our 40-man roster and see who's worth calling up. We got pitchers we could call up, but we are at the maximum amount of pitchers, I think, already in the majors. Let me just check, because I think you can only have, like, 13. So 3, 5, 6, 7. So there's 7. We got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I don't think we could call up any pitchers. We have to call up actual infielders. So I can't call up like Cora and Francisco, if I'm not mistaken. 
I could call up Todd Davies, but I don't really think he brings much to us. He'd also have, like, his last minor league option. I might bring up Johannes Berg, actually. Yeah, I think Johannes Berg would be okay to bring up. How's he been in AAA? Not the best, but we'll bring him up since I don't want to uh, bring up a young guy anyways. So we will move him to the MLB as one of the September call-ups. Uh, we will not bring up Wrangle because he's on three options and he's a pitcher. I guess we have to bring up Rafael Rodriguez as the other option. He is on his last option, which kind of sucks, but we will bring him up since we can't bring up any pitchers. I'm pretty certain on that front. So There will be our 28-man roster going into the playoffs. Let's uh, take a look at, I guess, AAA and AA, and they will finish off their season here in the next few weeks. So actually, we'll just focus on the MLB, but we need to go to the 14th. So that way we can take a look at uh, AA and AAA and see how they finished off the year. AAA needs more players, which means we got to call up some guys from double. Or I might just move Larry Hendricks over. Actually, it's positional players they need. So we'll move uh, Suavez up to triple. That might be all we need. We'll move Larry Hendricks up to double. See if that helps out things with the roster count. Hopefully it does. And yeah, we'll continue simulating. Um, let's see, Triple A still needs more positional players. Goddamn. Yeah, we might have to sign some free agents for uh, Double A, just because those injuries are playing a little bit of a factor right now. So let's call up Joe Reader. I don't really give a crap on who it is. Is that enough players, or do they? Uh, does Double A now need players? Triple A still it doesn't have four valid lineups. Let's go to their lineup and adjust that quickly. Yeah, those injuries put us in a bad spot. If we didn't have injuries, we would be okay. But those injuries have put us in a weird spot. I don't care if guys are playing out of position right now. So I'll just throw anybody in at this stage. Sure, that works. Or actually, wait, it said four valid lineups, so I might have to adjust the other lineups too. Yep, thought so. Actually, eight. Yeah, thought so. Shartner and uh, Springer are getting close to being MLB ready. Look at that, 77 and 76. Both of them are having fantastic seasons, which is awesome to see. Hopefully, some of them can get into our lineup next year. They'll probably be on the 40-man for sure, at least. So, very excited for that. Those guys developed a lot faster than I expected, which is okay. Okay, perfect. That is good to go. Let's uh, go to the 14th and then take a look at double-A stats and see how double A is doing at that stage. And <laughs> now double A needs players. So yeah, we are going to have to sign some players for double A. So let's go to the free agents. I'm glad free agency's open all year because they're all, I'd be in a bad spot right now. Let's just sign a low overall player, like a 36 overall, like this dude. Because I'm on one cent. I can't even afford it. Oh my goodness, we're in that same spot we were in last year in terms of the cap situation. I might have to get them to auto-adjust this. Um, let's go auto-fix roster. And then we will stop this for a second and see what it did. Did it adjust my MLB roster? Um, make sure I have the right guys in the MLB still because I do need to make sure my MLB roster is good. Yeah, I think everything is sale the same, so that's good. <clears throat> oh, man, my voice is trying to die on me. Let's try and keep going, going through this. Let's auto-fix the rotation. Auto on that. Um, I have to call up a player still. Oh, my goodness. I hate getting stuck in this situation. Who did they send down that uh, I'll have to call up? Um, Let's see. Todd Davies, maybe. No, it was Berg I called it before. Let's just call up Todd Davies. See if that helps out things. Come on. Let's just go auto fix all on that. And see if that helped out the problem. I hope it didn't send anybody down. I didn't want to. Okay, it just sent down Todd Davies again. So we should hypothetically still have our same roster, correct? And see everything looks fine there just got to make sure we got like the right guys in because I don't know what this game is trying to do to me right now and I don't have the patience to adjust it okay pitching looks fine 
line it up. Let's make sure we got the right guys up here still, which looks good. Okay, I think we're fine. I think we're fine. If we're not, obviously I can make some adjustments accordingly, but let's continue going. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we're in a little bit of a bind here. Let's go auto fix 28 man roster instead. And I think that should be fine. Let's see. Yeah, I think that should be fine here. I am going to change Ray McMahon and Bill Pineda, though. I don't know why that flopped around. Because Ray McMahon shouldn't be... I don't want to change Juanis Bergen. God damn it, man. <laughs> I'm a little bit scrambled right now. I don't want Ray McMahon being a starter. I wanted Pineda in on those spots. Actually, wait a second. What's going on here? Oh. Ah, uh, Michael Chu needs to be in. Yeah, that's right. Chu needs to be in. So we move Chu into third base. We then take... Actually, no, this part wouldn't really matter, so Pineda will just not stay out. So it doesn't really matter on that one. Just got to get uh, the DH swapped. There you go. That's fine. 96 and 47. We are doing really well. Let's go another week. We are almost at the end of the double A season as we've won almost every game over the last two weeks except for a 9-8 loss. Craziness. We're at 101 wins. And this is the last day of the double A season. We win that game as well. And our double A team finishes 45 in 24. Which I think has them in the playoffs, which is pretty dope. Let's take a look at our stats for double A. So Blake Smith, pretty solid year, looks like. 20, started 27 games, had 10 quality starts. I like it. Johnny Reeves, pretty solid numbers as well. Actually, really good numbers for Johnny Reeves. ERA and whip is high. Good win-loss ratio. Started 28 games, had 18 quality starts, so that's fantastic from a C potential guy. I think he deserves an upgrade for sure. Uh, Manny Fuentes, not as good, but it looks like he might have been cold as of the last few games. Still had 15 quality starts, though, so that's good. Michael Flutie, solid numbers, looks like. Larry Hendricks was terrible. He only played one game, though, and he's a 51 overall, so <laughs> kind of makes sense. Uh, Cho was pretty good as a reliever more so. Cabrera was pretty good. A lot of the pitching was actually really good. Cedric Fontenet, who we drafted recently, had a pretty solid showing as a reliever. He didn't start any games, but still 46 innings of work and under a 2 ERA and a 1.14 whip. In general, I think the numbers here from uh, AA is fantastic in terms of the pitching. So hopefully a lot of these guys get some really good growth from that. Uh, let's take a look at their lineup. Sammy Pugh kind of struggled. Not the best numbers from him, but he didn't really play a lot, I think. Uh, De Silva, not the best either. Lugo, not the best. Looks like the hitting numbers are definitely not as good. Like, they're a very good pitching team, this AA team of ours. Mori Gomez had some solid stats. Over a 300 batting average for John Bonner. That's really good for an A potential third baseman. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, over Just over 200 for Fletcher Sanchez. Not really that great, to be honest. In general, the batting definitely lacks a lot of quality stats. But the pitching was great. So there is double A. Let me know what you guys think for upgrades on that team. And let's go to the end of the triple A season. And oh, Sparbori's injured for a few days. We'll just um, we'll go keep active for now. So yeah, Triple A has made the playoffs and Double A have won the uh, made the playoffs as well. Both of them won their division, which is pretty cool. So let's take a look at some Triple A stats now. So Johnny Almont, pretty solid numbers. How many quality starts out of 30 games? 17, pretty good. Uh, Fernando Cora was also really good. These guys are probably ready for the majors, so we might have a good decision on who we want to replace uh, Sparbori with potentially this offseason if Sparbori doesn't come back. Because Johnny Almont, he's our young up and coming prodigy, maybe. Fernando Cora might be a good, solid kind of guy, too, but he's already 25. Raymond Chu, pretty good. Pretty good. Henry Vesperis, really solid as well. 17 wins. I'll take that. Uh, and then Manny Cologne, not so good. But pretty much every pitcher was really decent. Uh, Brian Zinn, pretty solid numbers, more so as a reliever. Rangel was not great in the win-loss department, but had a solid ERA and whip. Uh, Poles was okay. Soto was solid too. Brian Morris was solid. Yeah, Brian Morris was actually pretty good, but he's regressed hard. 
which is not great. And Pena was okay as well. In terms of the batting in AAA, Howard Springer was great. This guy is going to be a really good player for us, I think. That vision and discipline is getting so good. The contact hitting is there already. And he's got some very solid stats across the board. He was batting 289, had a 796 OPS, 14 home runs, 70 RBIs. Not too bad. Carlos Suavez as well is getting some good growth. It looks like he was in double A to start. I don't know what his stats were like, but in his short span in triple A, he was decent enough. Brady Shartner, though, has been absolutely insane. And this guy definitely deserves to be a B potential he definitely does. He's a C-potential player, but he's a 77 overall now at 19. Fantastic contact. His power hitting is not great, but still the contact is there. The vision discipline is almost there as well. This guy's going to be a really good contact hitting guy. He's almost going to be like an Aussie for second base, I think, because he was batting a 323 this year in AAA as a 19-year-old. So very excited for Brady Shartner. He might be in the majors next year and be a replacement for somebody like Chu. Uh, Kobayashi, I mean, he had 17 home runs and 77 RBIs, which is good, but the batting average is not there, probably because he lacks discipline and whatnot, but still, not too bad from Kobayashi. Uh, Castellano was pretty good. I mean, he is only, t he's already 25, so eh, but still not bad. Todd Davies was pretty good as well. Jesus Cruz. Yeah, it was pretty much uh, Brady Shartner and Springer, though, that ran the show, it seems like, in AAA in terms of offense. Brad Thornton got sent down. I guess that was what part of that change, which kind of sucks, but it had to happen, I guess, for this to work. But oh well. So there's Brad Thornton's stats. He should probably be in the majors based on those AAA stats. Like, he only played 17 games, but had 6 home runs and 17 RBIs. He should technically be back up here, but we can't uh, do that until those injuries are resolved, I guess. So there is AAA and AA. Let's get the rest of our Major League season done. We're at 106 wins. We're, we were on pace for 109 wins. We could technically have more than that. We already have one of the best seasons in MLB history, I think, at this point. Because when I was looking up the stats, I think it was Seattle that had the best MLB season in 2001. Um, but we aren't going to reach that. But the most wins we could finish with is 112, which is pretty insane. So, can we finish with 112 wins, or is Houston... Is, can Houston even catch us? No, they can't. No, they cannot, but let's still see how we finish off the year anyways. Sparbori is back. That is good. Let's uh, go auto-utilize for a second. Make sure he's back in his normal spot, which he is perfect. Good that it was only for a few days, though, because I didn't really want to lose Sparbori, even though he's not the best pitcher in the world. And, uh, wow, Double and Triple A are winning their series right now, and it looks like they're going to the championship, which is pretty dope. We've lost four straight games here going into the playoffs, potentially, which is not ideal, but, I mean, maybe it gives us a better chance of winning in the postseason. And now we have our final three games. Will we finish with 109 wins, or will we tie last year's win-loss ratio? It's going to be interesting to find out here. Three games against the Dodgers, who are not in the playoffs. And we win all three of them. We finish 109-53, as we were predicting. We are the best team in baseball yet again. And we have outdueled ourselves from last year, which is kind of crazy. Let's freaking go. We are the best team in the AL. <clears throat> and so we're the best team in the AL. Cleveland took the second best spot in the AL. So you have Houston and L.A. We will be playing the winner of that series. So that's a bit scary because that means Angels-wise, we'd be facing all these gentlemen. Houston-wise, we're facing a very tough team. And then you also have Baltimore and the White Sox in a wild card spot. In the NL, you have Cincinnati and Philly and San Francisco and Washington in the wild card. Winner will face Pittsburgh and Miami. <clears throat> So there is that. Let's take a look at our player stats for the season. Actually, let's start with the standings. Take a look at that a little bit more because the standings should be interesting. So, yeah, we, uh, we're the best team by far. We, we're six wins up on the Astros. So yeah, I'm a bit scared of the Astros. I really hope that they get knocked out in that wild card matchup because if they win the World Series out of a wild card spot, I would be kind of mad. We definitely had troubles with the Astros as well this season, so... But we scored 901 runs, which is almost 
Yeah, that's like 107 more than the Astros, so that's kind of nuts. <laughs> but yeah, they have definitely the better pitching. We kind of gave up a bit too much runs, but we actually were one of the best uh, teams in terms of runs allowed in our division, so hopefully that means something. Let's take a look at stats across the other teams. So the Guardians end up winning the AL Central. White Sox were in the other spot at 500. Then in the AL East, Orioles won it. They were the only team to go to the playoffs from that division. Everybody else was below 500. Uh, wild card race, this is what it looked like at the end. The Reds had 92 wins in a wild card spot. And then the other spots were all very much closer. Giants finished 83 and 79. The Pirates finished 102 and 60. So you had three teams with 100 plus wins this year. Marlins finished 88 and 74. And there is that. So us in the Astros were the best two teams in baseball. And uh, there is a chance that we might face each other next round, which is kind of scary. Kind of scary indeed. Let's take a look at our team rankings. We are the best team in batting average, batting at 288. The next closest team was the 279, and that was the Pirates. Best team at bats, runs as well still, by 60 runs. Uh, we're still number one in hits and doubles. Triples, we, we're tied for fourth still. So staying pretty much to course, which is good. We were second in home runs, so we got passed by the Marlins. So that's kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. So there is that. We are first in RBIs by a large margin. Stolen bases-wise, we finished seventh. Pretty solid. And our stolen base percentage dropped off a little bit in the second half, or the not the second half, I guess I could say, but the last little bit as we finished ninth. Still first in base on balls, though. Slugging percentage number one, on base percentage number one, plate appearances and stuff like that number one. The question is our ERA. How good did this finish? Third best in the friggin' league. The best though was Houston. And that's a team we could play, like I said, next round. So very scared of Houston. I really hope that they get upset somehow by the Angels, because that would give us like a lot of chance to win a World Series this year if somehow they lose. Or if somehow Houston wins their series, it's going to pose us a big problem in the next round. That is scary. But we were still the third best team in pitching. So that's good. Uh, Pirates finished number two as well. So yeah, the Pirates in Houston are very scary. All three of us were the 100 win teams. So that's exciting. So there is all that, I think. Let me just make sure I'm showing every stat. Yeah, see, us in Houston. Uh, who is going to win it? I think whoever wins, if Houston gets to face us, whoever comes out of the series is winning the World Series. That's my prediction right now. So there's that. Let's take a look at our player stats. So we'll go through the statistics screen instead. And we'll go by each position. So let's look at our pitchers first here. Starting off with Pablo Silva, who had a great season with 19 wins. A 3.73 ERA and a 1.27 whip. He's up to a 91. Still has two years of arbitration, but his contract is going to be expensive this year. 16 quality starts out of 32 games. Exactly half. Pretty solid. So he's finally living up to that potential. Garth Howe. Really good numbers as well from him. Another 19-5 and pitcher. He had a little bit better ERA-wise and a much better whip. Really good stats from Garth Haugen. He has not dropped off yet, which is great. And he is still signed for four more seasons. Garth Howe is probably still one of my favorite players in this series for sure. 22 quality starts out of those 33 games. Fantastic. Carmen Osuna, also below 4 ERA, a 14-8 record with a 1.31 whip. He's up to a 91 overall at 22. Still two years of ARB as well for him. 20 quality starts out of 33 games. So these three guys, fantastic so far. <clears throat> then we go over to Sammy Gomez, who also had good stats. 13-5 and five with a 372 ERA and a 1.21 whip. Up to an 87 overall. 24 quality starts out of 32 games. I am impressed with every pitcher so far. And then we swap over to Bobby Hyde, who is probably our worst pitcher. But it was because he went from starter to reliever. Or reliever to starter, I should say. 11 and 10. Not the best ERA, not the best whip. 12 quality starts is okay for 32 games, but it's not great. I might have to swap him back to a reliever next year. 
or in the playoffs even for that matter because we could always use our Boris to start in that spot instead. We take a look at our relief pitchers. Doug Rubel was pretty good. Pretty good stats from Doug Rubel. Yeah, I like Doug Rubel's stats a lot. Jack Birch was great as well. So those two were all five pickups from a long time ago. Really solid numbers. Uh, Pete Tavares was okay. His numbers definitely improved. Not the best stats, but still, I'll take it. Brian Morris got called up randomly, and same with Wrangle. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to make some adjustments to my roster before these playoffs start. I don't know why I made adjustments to my roster. Uh, Ken Robert was really good. Dennis Lake was pretty good as well. And Luis Guzman was pretty good. Let me uh, go to my roster quickly because I do not know why Sparbori got sent down and why Brian Morris got called up. I don't know why this game is trying to adjust my roster. So Sparbori up. Brian Morris removed from playoff roster. Who else got sent down that shouldn't have? There's got to be at least maybe one more. Oh, Kenny Olinger, right? Yeah, it was Kenny Olinger. Olinger needs to come back up. And we need to send somebody down. Who did they call up? Jonas Berg is still up here, so we'll move him from our playoff roster. There you go. That should be good. That should be good. Oh, Todd Davies is also up here. God damn, man. Why does this game adjust stats like that? Remove Todd Davies. And we'll actually add Brad Thornton. There we go. Just got to make sure we got the right guys up here. Michael Chu got sent down too. Friggin' Christ, man. Who's not supposed to be up here? Oh, my goodness. Why did it adjust my roster? Um, hmm. Hmm. Maybe, oh, maybe we will send Brad Thornton back down, actually. So I will send Brad Thornton down. Is Michael Chu, how was he doing here? 249. He was kind of struggling a bit. <clears throat> but we kind of need him up here because we don't have an actual third baseman. I don't want Bobby Swain being up, uh, being the main guy. So we'll do this again. I'll probably have to adjust the lineup a bit after this episode, but it is what it is. Oh, I didn't want to release him. I almost released him. Jeez. Whew, glad I can't release during the playoffs. Okay, now we have our right guys up here. So now let's go back to stats because I just got completely interrupted by that. Uh, let's go back to starting pitchers. So now we can actually take a look at these guys' stats. So Sparbori was also really solid. Sparbori was solid. He was used as a reliever, but solid numbers from Harvey Sparbori. Uh, Kenny Olinger was also pretty solid. So some good numbers across the pitching, I'd say, for our team. The question is the batting guys. How did they do? <clears throat> God damn. Six no finish with only 29 home runs, but 110 RBIs and a 331 batting average. He's dropped to a 90. So he's on rapid decline, but he's still playing like a boss. Love me some Giancarlo Sixto. Fantastic season yet again for him. William Helperin has been really actually solid as like a depth batter. I like it. A 298 is pretty good. What else we got here? Ozzy batted a 261, so his numbers improved in the second half, but still not his best season, but I would still say in a successful season. But hopefully he uh, outperforms himself next year because that contract is getting more expensive as the years go on. We head to second base. Anton Trevino, really good year from Anton Trevino. And he was healthy all year too, which is a big plus. A little bit better batting average. Worse home run wise, but better RBIs and similar OPS. Love it. We had to Michael Chu. Not the best stats, but hopefully he could have a good playoffs because he was good last year when we had him. So there's Chu. Bobby Swain off the bench, not the best. I honestly could send him down and then call up somebody, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Then we head over to our shortstop. Pinero has been great. 30 home runs this year for George Pinero. Still signed for one more season after this, but a career high in home runs and RBIs. Very good batting average as well. And at least he's been healthy all year as well, because I think he was injured last year too. And Ray McMahon was really good off the bench. A 3-11 average. Really good stats there from those two guys. 
Gary Steiner was fantastic. He's also a pending free agent, which is not great because I might end up losing him because of his money. But 21 home runs this year, 73 RBIs, a 328 average. Jeez. I don't know where that came from, but great year for Gary Steiner. Then we head to the other outfielders. Bill Pineda only batted at 247, so his average fell off a lot. Home run and RBIs is still pretty damn solid, though. Yeah, solid year, I'd say, for Bill Pineda. Not as good as last year, but still pretty solid nonetheless. Josh Groves was really good. Yeah, it was actually fantastic. God damn, Josh. God damn. His first, like, full season, I'd say, where he was not really injured, he batted a 310. Had 27 home runs this year, which is a big development. Over 100 RBIs as well. Great season from him. And he is still signed for two more years at a very good price. Right feeling wise, Bill O'Donnell finished with a 308 average, so he fell off a little bit, but he still had a fantastic season. I don't know what came of Bill. He's a pending free agent as well, so I'm kind of scared that he might be gone this season. But career high in home runs and RBIs, a career best at batting average wise, like Bill showed what he did in the playoffs and brought it to the regular season as well, it seems like. So there is our player stats. Very happy with everybody almost on this team, I'd say. Like, if we go to positional players, like, we had all these guys hit over 20 home runs. We had a couple guys just miss out on it, like Trevino. But, like, we had a ton of 20 hit home run hitters. We had four guys over 100 RBIs. OPS-wise, we had a bunch of guys over 800. Ozzy was the lowest out of the bunch, him and Pineda. Also, Chu and Swain. But, in general, this team had a fantastic year. And I hope that we could do it in the playoffs as well. Yeah, the only guy that was negative in war was Michael Chu. So there is that. Now, do we have any award winners? It looks like we do. We also have some league leaders too. So let's take a look at the league leaders first. So Bill O'Donnell led the league in RBIs. 6-0 led in slugging percentage. And also on on-base percentage. And he also led in war. So... That is great to see. We had three guys up there in batting average, those being Sixto, Steiner, and Groves. And hits-wise, Bill was number two, only behind Doug Duvall. Double-wise, Ollie Gelman was first. Of course, Ollie Gelman had a great season after we let him go. I could have probably held on to him for one year, but we would have been even more in a cap bind than we currently are. Bill O'Donnell was number three, though. Triple-wise, Bill O'Donnell was tied for six with his former teammate and Ollie Gelman. Home run-wise, uh, Pinero and Sixto were both up there. Pinero actually was a better home run hitter, though, just by the one. Bill was number one in RBIs. Josh Groves was almost number one. And Sixto and Pinero also up there. So four guys in the top five in RBIs, which is craziness. Uh, five guys in the top of runs. Jeez. Yeah, that offense is craziness. Craziness. Sixto up there for slugging percentage. OPS we know as well. And then we had two pitchers up there in wins, Silva and Howe. Also three guys down there in losses, so at least amount of win or losses, I should say, not wins. We didn't have anybody up there in ERA. The Astros had three guys. <laughs> That's kind of scary. I really hope they get knocked out, because or else I am very scared that we might lose to them because of that. Strikeouts, we had five or four guys up there in strikeouts this year. That's great. <clears throat> What else we got here? Anything else? Whip, we had two guys up there. Gomez and Howe. Pitching war, Howe was number three. Silva was seven. And batting war, Sixto was number one. But we had literally four, uh, yeah, four guys in the top eight in batting war. So what a great year for this team. The question is, who won awards for us this season? Garth Howe has won his second Cy Young of his career. So shout out to Garth Howe for being a two-time Cy Young winner. I didn't think he was going to win it this year, to be honest, with uh, those two Houston guys in Ronald Medina, and I don't remember the other one's name. But Garth Howe has won the Cy Young, and we have two other award winners. What are they? Sixto has won the Hank Aaron Award. I believe that's his second of his career. So that is awesome to see. And what is the third award? Garth Howe is your AL MVP. Let's go. Garth Howe, an MVP. I did not expect that. We had three guys that were up there for MVP in the AL. 
We cleaned house. It was going to be one of our players regardless, and Garth Howe is the one that takes it. Sixto was number two in that, and Silva almost won MVP, which is craziness considering that guy used to be so trash a few years back. Wow. Garth Howe in MVP. I did not expect him to be the MVP. I thought it would be Sixto. But Garth Howe of all people, I like it. What a legend Garth Howe has turned out to be. So there is that. Let's go through the rest of the awards. We had two guys up there for the Cy Young. So yeah, Garth wins it. But Pablo Silva nearly won it. And then after that, Ronald Medina was up there. Uh, batting title-wise, Sixto nearly won it. But it went to Omar Cruz. Let's see. Any other guys that almost win awards? Sixto obviously got that hand care. And I'm pretty sure he had one in his career before. But I could be wrong with that. Um, Sixto almost won the gold glove for catcher as well. Trevino almost won gold glove for second base. Uh, that's funny how this uh, Guillermo de, de Los Santos guy, his name is literally going over top of the logo of the Baltimore Orioles. That's not great there for uh, user experience, but oh well. What else we got here? Bill O'Donnell up there for golden glove for right field. And then Silver Sluggers, Sixto wins it for the catcher. Uh, Cardenas nearly won one for first base, but he doesn't get it this year. Trevino won it for second base. Uh, Pinero wins it for shortstop. Outfielding-wise, Bill Donald gets one. Josh Groves gets one. And that is it. There we go. So there is all our award winners. Very happy with those stats and award winners. Now I think it comes down to who are we going to be playing in the ALDS. Please be the Angels. I would rather face Ollie Gelman than the Houston Astros with their pitching. We are going to find out now who is going to win that series. So we'll go one day at a time, see if there's any change to their score. No, there has not been so far. Um, Okay, that doesn't really matter too much. Houston wins game one. Not ideal. And it's going to be Houston. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is not great. We're going to be taking on the best pitching team in baseball in the ALDS. Which means if we lose to them, we get knocked out earlier than normal. Or we might be able to find ourselves somehow back in the ALCS. The White Sox knocked out Baltimore, which is a kind of a big upset. So, I think we have a good chance if we get past Houston. I really do. Cincinnati's already up 1-0 on Pittsburgh, which is kind of a surprise. And Miami is up 1-0 on San Fran. But let's take a look at what Houston is looking like. I know that they do have... Um, more uh what's his name what the heck is his name i can't remember it's our former pitcher one of them oh uh, there he is yeah william montero that's who i went them in but anyways this is their pitching rotation and it is scary i can see why they're a really good pitching team guillermo santo looking like that yeah this guy is great ronald medina who nearly won the cy young he is great as well. These two guys both pitched all nine innings in the last games that they played. You have Manuel Cabrera, who was also really good. Our former guy, William Montero, I hope we could beat the crap out of this guy. He was not good this year. Everybody else that was pitching was, so. But he definitely struggled. Nick Walker, how good is this dude? This dude's also pretty solid. So we got to be able to win all these, like, against these top guys. Or else we don't stand really a chance, I should say. Bullpen-wise, they got Oliver Dewitt. They also got Antoine Green, Harvey Abe, Paul Hernandez, Lance Machado, Robbie Wilkins, and Anton Rivera. Okay, so they don't turn to the relievers that often, especially when they have these two guys. We definitely got to find a way to beat these guys. If we do not... <laughs> it's going to be problematic. I really hope we can beat them because I honestly think they might be a kryptonite type of team because of the fact they were good at pitching. Let's uh, take a look at what their lineup looks like. And I will adjust our lineup before next episode, so don't worry. But they have Ben Trulio. I don't really like their offense really as much right now at the moment, but they still might be good contact-wise. So Ben Trulio looks like that. Aaron Luke who apparently had a good uh, wild card matchup. Tom Koo. We've seen Tom Koo win some awards. Former Miami guy. Pretty good player. 
Gregorio Diaz. Not super great. At least not in the least there. But really good power against righties. Which is not ideal considering we have a lot of right-handed pitchers. We also do have lefties though, so that's good. Uh, Kevin Richards has yet to hit the ball. Brandon she Shealy. Pretty solid. Yeah, they have some good players though. Jeremy Scott, pretty good. Cole Young. Not great. Yeah, Cole Young's definitely a weakness on their offense. Quinn Randolph. How good is this dude? Uh, yeah, he's pretty solid. And a bench-wise, Michael Ibarra. Barney Tarbarney. Or Tabarn? Yeah, Barney Tabarn? That's a weird name. Tabarn? Yeah, I think that's how it's maybe pronounced. Barney Tabarn. And it seems really weird. I don't know. Uh, Mitch Kennedy. We also have Drake Baldwin and Thomas Winston. Huh. Oh, this guy is a 68 overall only. Jeez. So I don't really like uh, their some of their guys that hit. So we might have a chance because of our offense. But if we get stifled by their pitching rotation, we have a problem. But if we do not have a pitching problem, like if Garth Howe plays as he did in the regular season, same with Silva, Osuna, Gomez, this could be a really good matchup. And then Bobby Hyde's kind of a wild card. I might honestly swap him and Kenny, or not Kenny, and Sparbori. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that already. Just for something different. Because Bobby was a great long reliever last year, so. Yeah, I think that's what we'll end up going with. And we'll probably end up... Hmm. Let me take a look at something quickly. We'll move Wrangel back to long reliever, and we'll move uh, Ken Robert to set our mid reliever from uh, setup guy and then I'll have to adjust our lineup for next episode but anyways guys that's going to do it for this episode of our Vancouver Rain Draft Glory franchise mode so in next episode we'll take it to the ALDS against a very good pitching team in the Houston Astros as we look to go back to the ALCS for the fourth consecutive season so anything down below and I'll see you guys next time